Greetings from Southern California. Today I'd like to talk about um, an angle grinder rock crusher that I made. Basically from mostly from stuff in my garage, uh, I had to purchase a few things, the steel tubing and a couple of other things. Anyway, <clears throat> it all runs off of a Makita four and a half inch uh, angle grinder. It's an incredible tool. I actually made a lot of it uh, using the angle grinder. So that's the subject of the video today, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get right on to it. So of course the power source is the Makita angle grinder, and uh, these things are pretty clever. This just comes off. There's a <clears throat> collar on the back you take off, and you're left with this is 5 8 11 thread, and that's uh, very important because we're going to put a coupling nut onto there. And we're going to make uh, a flail, which is uh, two carabiners that are attached to the rotating shaft that I'll show you. We want to seal this thing up so that dust can't get back out of this and uh, out to the world. So it turns out that for a Makita angle grinder. This is a inch and three quarter aluminum tubing with a 035 inch or a 35 thou uh, wall. And amazingly that fits perfectly over there. So that's a key part of this design. And You'll see what I mean by looking at the back of this. So let's get a little bit better view of things. Okay, so there's that tubing that fits onto there. That tubing has been epoxied to this piece of uh, three quarter inch plywood. And then these two hardwood pieces um, have holes in them where I can run screws through those holes and into the grinder and that locks this thing completely um, tight and very sturdy. And this little plate is just to uh, add a little bit more support here. I'm not even sure it's necessary. But anyway, the way that locks into place is like that. And uh, it turns out that these... <laughs> okay. So as it turned out, this is kind of a hybrid um, uh, measuring system. This is 5 8 11, but this is an M8 by 1.25 millimeter. And I had to buy these uh, bolts from the hardware store. I actually have them. M8 by 1.25 millimeter. And that goes into there. Uh, honestly, it does. So the collar locks, the, the collar of the grinder locks right into there. <laughs> there we go. And then we put the bolts in. And you notice that this is on an angle. So what I actually did was I made these pieces and drilled the holes in them, and then I glued it down in place with the bolts engaging those plates. And then I drilled uh, holes up through here so that I could put uh, wood screws to hold this. So, you know, just good construction practice. Okay, so that is like that. And then on this side, we see we have now the uh, 5 8 11 uh, stud sticking out and into that we put the flail. So this is nothing more, this is a 5 8 11 coupling nut, 5 8 11 bolt, a piece of steel that I drilled three holes in. So that's um, uh, eighth inch by one inch piece of, um, you know, low carbon steel. And then these are carabiners. Now you notice the wear 
on the carabiner already. You can see the wear, and I've only run about five kilograms through this. So this is gonna wear pretty fast, and I'm gonna go through these carabiners uh, fairly fast, but that's okay. They're, you know, you can buy them for about a buck a piece. And, you know, if I had a welder, maybe um, I could weld something on there, but I don't really think I need to. Anyway, it's going to wear down and I'll just replace it. It's one hell of a machine. It's kind of frightening how fast it grinds the rocks up. So, we're going to put this onto here. Okay, so let's talk about the rest of this thing. This I purchased on eBay. It was about nine dollars but i think the shipping was also like 10 bucks so it's about a 20 dollar piece this is a um six inch diameter steel pipe ips which means what internal pipe seam i think so there's a seam on the inside it's um the the width of this is 2.25 inches or two and a quarter inches and it's being bonded to this stack of plywood here. I had to stack up like four pieces of plywood to get the thickness right. Um, it's been bonded using epoxy in here. So that gap is almost, you don't see the epoxy here because it soaks in, but that gap is almost completely filled with epoxy throughout the, the entire um, instrument. So something very important to know about this is that the Makita angle grinder spins it this way. And these nuts tighten that way. So it's always being tightened as it spins. So when it knocks into a rock, the natural tendency is always to tighten uh, those two screw, those two threaded joints. Super important. Also, you notice the rocks come out here and they get whacked by this thing. And that's important because they're getting whacked downward and that prevents a lot of the rocks from shooting back out. Although you do get some rocks coming back out. And I'll show you how I use it, but I have a cap that goes over that and we'll see how that's useful in a minute. This is a steel pipe. This was my aluminum prototype, so I cut that shape into it. And being aluminum, it was kind of easy to shape. So I've got the shape right, uh, and then I moved to steel. And it's bonded into this assembly using JB Weld epoxy again, absolutely tight. There's the end of that pipe that's been shaped. I cut this, the hole in here, which is a kind of a laborious task, but something that you have to do. I actually just drilled a bunch of holes around this um, shape that I wanted. And then I used a file to clean it up. It probably took, the whole thing took maybe a half an hour to get that hole uh, perfect. And the rocks slam against this side right here because of the action of the flail. If you're dropping rocks into this thing, they slam into there. And that's why I wanted it to be steel and not aluminum. And so far, so good. As I said, I've run five kilos more or less through this and everything is fine so far. Okay, so what else do we have here? Of course, the thing needs a cover. And my steel plates are 90 thou thick, which is what, a little over two millimeters. And on here I have an exit port, which I really haven't used very much, although I'm gonna try it. I would like this to be a continuous process if I wanna process a bunch of ore using it. And right now I've only processed small batches, so I really don't know how well this works yet. Um, anyway, there's, that's the way it would work, and this would go into a bucket or something else. Um, it's very, very dusty in that uh, condition, or using it that way, it's very dusty, and I don't like it. So what I do 
here in the backyard is I just um, plug that hole up with um, anything. This is a paper towel. And then I run it in batches, which means I put about a kilogram into it at a time before I open it back up and dump it out. And that works really well. This is a 5 sixteenths um, hardware. Hand tight is good enough. The other thing to note is I've got that steel plate on here in the back and the steel plate in front. So the, the stones only see steel as they go around. That's really important. I had an earlier prototype where I didn't do that and the wood gets chewed up like immediately. So that doesn't work. And there's the, uh, you can see the construction here. I haven't finished this off and painted it and all that yet so that you can see what I've done. All right, there's three layers of three quarter inch plywood. There's a layer of like one eighth inch plywood and that makes up the correct thickness for the um, pipe that I got. So I didn't actually touch the pipe at all. Used it as it came out of the box. Then there's a three quarter inch piece of plywood here that allows me to make uh, that glue joint there and it makes it easy to hold uh, these supports. So that should be pretty clear. And those screws that you see there, they hold uh, this. So epoxy is really good in shear, but it doesn't work as well in um, tension. So for the tension part, the screws take up um, a lot of the force. And perhaps you can also see that I actually cut this out with a bandsaw and I just, there's the bandsaw starting slit right there. And then you just rotate where the slit is so that it doesn't line up in the same place. And you get a really strong um, housing that way. All right, so let's put it together. I'll eventually have little knobs that make this somewhat faster to put these nuts on. And one of the nice things about this construction is, is it stands up on its own, which I really appreciate now that I've used it a bit. So I'm gonna plug it in. All right, so I got some leftover rocks from various uh, prospecting expeditions. This has almost no gold in it. It's waste rock, but it's great for testing the machine. Um, I'll put in the big pieces. It takes big pieces or little pieces, whatever you want. Anything that'll fit in here will get uh, crushed very nicely by the machine. So let's, uh, let's, let's do it. The, vol the internal volume of this is about 1.2 or 1.3 liters, and that would be mm, two kilograms of rocks. And I can go about halfway before things start to get a little bit iffy inside, you know, things start to slow down. So I can put in about uh, one kilogram of rocks at a time in this, and you'll see what I mean. So in pulse mode, I don't get a lot of dust, which I like very much. I'm gonna put on um, hearing protection. So I put in, oh, four or five rocks like that. And I crush. See, there's no substantially no dust that comes out of it. So we'll just throw in some rocks. And we crush. And that's all it takes to crush those rocks. It only takes a second or two. So I can do about a kilogram of rocks every two minutes. Uh, so you can work out the rate.
Okay, so I'm sure you get the idea. So for casual prospecting, it's really uh, incredibly convenient. And another nice thing is I could buy a battery-powered version of this Makita and take it out into the field with a few charged-up batteries, and I could do everything in the field. All right, so I turned rock into that material. So I've got a 60 mesh screen, which I like very much. I think it's about right for this. And I'm going to screen this so that we see how much is finer than 60 mesh. Okay, so there's the split. I would say roughly half of it is finer than 60 mesh and roughly half of it is larger. I could probably do a little better job screening it, but you get the idea. Now if I put this back in, uh, let's take a look at what happens. So suppose I want everything to be finer than 60 mesh, which is a pretty pretty good goal if you if you want to do um, assay work. I think you've got to get the uh, I think you've got to get the ore down to finer than 60 mesh, or you'll be missing quite a bit of the really fine gold, which we have in the Mojave. The gold is very fine. There's a lot of it. But it's very fine. So the whole batch just goes right back in and we'll turn it on with hearing protection. It's loud. So that's the split now. I'd say we have two thirds uh, fine and one third still that could use some more grinding. So what I usually do is just throw this in with the next batch and it just keeps, keeps getting ground up finer and finer and I'm always left with 60 minus. And I could go to 100 minus with this uh, tool and it would work just fine. All right, so I hope you uh, enjoyed all of this. It's a great tool to have. I'm going to have to worry about the wear on the carabiners, but that's about it. I think for maintenance, just have a few carabiners hanging around uh, to replace the ones that are on there. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it.